mini market that used to get stuff from still do this is my house this is uh right here my grandma's house that lives down there let's go to my house just watch the steps and watch the head man good morning is that bother you see your wife and the little <laughs> devil baba did it oh. no no Hey. <laughs> Always trying to break stuff. <laughs> so this is my house and uh this is my favorite spot in the house. This is right across the TV. All the children down here watching my favorite shows or uh, whatever that is on TV. Used to watch my old fights of replays and um Spend time with the family. So, pretty much welcome to my crib. Alice. Normally when I'm home, I pretty much do nothing. I uh, just kinda chill back and relax. Play with my kid a little bit. Try to bother my wife as much as possible. Uh, she hates me when I do it, but I love to nag her a little bit, you know, every now and then. Well, becoming a father is probably the best thing that ever has happened to me. It has changed my whole life. I'm uh, more serious about my career. Can't afford to lose. I love winning, everybody does. But now I have, uh, I have a message to send to my son just to kind of like to let them know that you can do whatever you want to do as long as you put your mind into it and if you put a goal in your head you can get there and just so he when he grows up also he can be proud of his father of what he has done and what he became am i proud of my own father yes of course i'm proud of my father he never had an easy life he's been working since he was a young kid a teenager he got married at a young age as well it's always been a tough life for him and he has brought us up the best way he I know he can. He gave us everything that we needed even though at some times he didn't have any money but he still went out there, hustled and, and brought food on the table. At first he never was supportive uh, to my career. He used to make fun of me and tell me like, oh, you're never gonna make it. Why are you, why are you bothering doing this and doing that? I know he had faith in me, but at, at times I think he didn't want me to go through this career because uh, as uh, as a young, well, as a teenager, he used to box as well. He was a, national, a Lebanese national champion and uh, a boxing national champion, and uh, he he dropped that to uh, to raise a family and. Uh, so yeah, I guess he never wanted me to go through that because it's not an easy life. So at first he, he he wasn't supportive, but then after a little while, after me winning a few fights, he he well he saw that I got potential and uh, he started becoming a little more supportive about it. Uh, growing up as a little fact with Dean, I was always a troublemaker. Uh, even though I looked skinny and 
I have long hair, but um, I guess that's why everybody used to pick on me because I didn't look like a tough guy. So everybody used to take me lightly and just try to pick on the um, on, uh, best kind of kid and they were always surprised of what kind of answers they got. Growing up, I never thought I would become a fighter. I always wanted to be a soccer player. I used to play soccer 24-7 uh, pretty much. The alley that I showed you a little bit earlier, that was like the little playground that I used to be, uh, where, where we used to play. And um, yeah, that's that's where we used to play all the time, me and uh, a lot of my boys. Uh, most of them are either out of here or uh, in jail or ended up uh, like passed away or whatever. I don't know if I want my kid growing up the same way I did. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell him what to do. That's for sure. I'm gonna let him have his own path. Um, there's no way I'm gonna have my kid uh, growing up on a path that I grew up at or have a plan for him. I'm gonna leave it up to him. He, he's gonna have to make his own choices and uh, whether it's a good choice or a bad choice, I'm gonna let him learn from life because uh, it doesn't matter how much I show him or what kind of way that I want him to grow up. If if that's not the way he wants it to be, it's not going to be. Why your mom? Baba. Like I said, this isn't a uh, very nice neighborhood. It's a ghetto neighborhood. Big Baba. This is where I grew up at and uh, it's always been tough. So this is a this is big part of me being a fighter or the way I grew up to become the fighter that I became. I want to get on a different level. So yeah, man. Uh, Brave has promised me to get me on on a second step, and um, I'll see where I'm at. And they're definitely gonna put on a show. And I promise the fans, man, it's gonna be a war. Whether I win or lose, I guarantee you a good fight. And uh, it's gonna be blood in there. destined for martial arts. A legend on the cusp of the biggest achievement of his notorious career. A trailblazer who has set the tone for the mixed martial arts revolution in Middle East. A warrior revered by his peers and idolized by his people. That's Mohamed Fakhreddin, the reigning Brave Combat Federation champion of the world. Mohammed, the latest Fakhreddin, has gone above and beyond for his legacy in the last 10 years. No matter how much he ran away from his destiny, martial arts would always creep its way back into his life. Mohamed Fakhreddin was first signed to Brave CF to star in the organization's first ever main event. An injury prevented him from making the historic fight night, but his run with Brave CF would be nothing short of extraordinary.
provided this mom in fact with Dean. Uh, we just landed in Bahrain. I'm here to fight the hard hat Uh I just want to see, uh, just want to say to all my fans, thanks for the support, for the fight, and uh, hopefully you guys are going to be there. Don't miss this fight. It's going to be a really good fight. I'm going to knock him out. Very ready for the fight. I just want to knock him out. That's all I want to do. We're gonna have the super talent Middle Eastern fighters, the legend of Middle East, Mohammed Fakhreddin. Everybody knows Mohammed Fakhreddin. I myself was a fan of Mohammed Fakhreddin way before Brave. Uh, when I see him fight, he was Middle East superstar. The reason why he's a superstar is this kid doesn't care about anything. He goes inside to fight and throw powerful punches. And you think that every punch he throws is 100% powerful. And then we have people saying, you know what, he's gonna gas himself out. And we wait for him to gas himself out. And he never gas himself out. He could put that pace and power for the whole way till the end of the fight. And when does this kid gas out himself? If you can throw 100% power in every punch of yours, in every kick of yours, and go aggressive on your opponent, don't gas out. Why wouldn't you do that? That's Mohammed Fakhreddin. That is why he's so exciting. That's exciting enough. You really have to go to the social media page of Mohammed Fakhreddin and Tahar Hanbi. These two guys have been non-stop going crazy at each other. If somebody hates each other, if any fight in this card is there where it's rivalry fight, if it's hate against hate, this is that fight. As I speak right now, these guys are throwing bombs at each other with mouths. They are just abusing each other, they're just going against each other, they're insulting and threatening each other. Uh, this guy started talking, he had nothing to do with the fight, me versus Booth, and then he started calling me names and stuff. And like at first I didn't think much of it, I, I let him talk. But then it kept elevating and he kept adding up. So I'm like, oh, this guy needs to be taught a lesson. So I talked to the matchmaker and uh, we made this fight happen. I think he saw one of my fights where someone got under my skin before and uh, and it kind of got me off my game plan and off my game a little bit. And I think that's what he's trying to do again, where he's trying to get under my skin and just try to piss me off so I'm not 100% in the fight. But that was like four years ago. It's completely different now, I'm a completely different person, completely different fighter. I'm a bit older, a bit wiser, and I know what's going on around me, and hey, I'm glad he did it. He's just provoked me to train harder. This fight will be the main event all day long on any fight. Oh, oh my God! Oh, he used the power of that fight! Tahar Hanfi with those fast hands from the Hanfi showing he's got heavy hands too! Can Fakhreddin recover? Somehow, someway, he's getting to his feet! Fakhreddin's got an iron chin Are too! Are you kidding me? Oh my God, he's made it to standing! It's happening again. Fakhreddin with a puncher's chance. Referee's going to stop it soon. Oh, Fakhreddin has to keep moving. And this fight's over. It's over. Valentine's gets it done. Biggest rivalry in Mid-East history. And it's over. Tahar Hadbi. Puts an exclamation mark on it. And it was that damage from round one. And then an absolute incredible combination that put away the latest. Hakkadeen's a monster and he wanted to keep fighting like the monster he is. The referee stopped it with good cause for fighter safety. From his tremendous rivalry with Taha Hadbi to his dramatic losses, Fakhreddin has always risen from the ashes. After a rough patch, he dismissed the brutal weight cuts that were holding him back at super welterweight and was unleashed into middleweight. It was at this weight class that he made history as world champion.
but not before an equally impressive run at the KHK Openweight Championship. To turn in the four men, one night historic tournament. Fakhruddin ended as runner-up after an amazing night at Brave CF 29. Even though he came up short and ended the challenge with several injuries, Fakhruddin's stock had never been higher. And he brought that momentum into his next bout, a world title shot against reigning champion Daniel Gaucho. In the moment of truth, he let it all out. Showcasing his bravery, his never-say-die attitude, and his willingness to engage with whoever is in his way. Fakhruddin knocked Gaucho out in the fourth round. His dream was realized. His soul was cleansed. And his hands were raised. Mohamed Fakhruddin, the Brave Combat Federation middleweight champion of the world. Lot of emotions I gotta tell you that it was a lot of emotions behind it this has been one of the hardest years that I ever had to go through in my life and uh, being able to achieve a dream that I've always wanted it it just in a way it made me cry inside before I cried in the outside because I just I I knew, I always knew I could do it. It's just that I was never able to show it because of circumstances, certain circumstances and certain situations that I had to go through or I put myself through. And when, when, when Daniel Gaucho dropped, all that stress, all that trouble, all that emotions, it was just like, I was, I was happy, I was very happy and I was proud of myself and I was sure that my family was proud of me and I was sure that Lebanon was proud of me, a whole lot of people, even, even people in Brave. They were very happy because they, they saw what kind of career that I had and what I had to go through to get there and that, was, that, that left me speechless. I, I didn't know what to say, I didn't know what to do. I just broke into tears. It was very tough, man. He had his house burned down. The economy in Lebanon is We had the big explosion with Corona and everything. And man, he, he, he showed up. He had the heart of a lion. He was the Arab lion, now he's the world's lion, you know? And hell yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, 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 come a down-to-earth hero to his fans. Mohamed Fakhruddin is a friendly man, known for his quick wit. Outside of the cage, he throws jokes around like pointed jabs and low kicks. Inside the cage, 
His transformation is as remarkable as he is. As he steps into the proving ground for his warrior spirit, he's no longer friendly. He has an insatiable need to prove himself, to let out his frustrations, to prevail. Once the cage door opens, Mohammed Fakhreddin is a savage. He wants only one thing, to beat his opponent and beat him in spectacular fashion. The stark contrast of these characters is one of the things that make Mohammed Fakhreddin such a fascinating man. His never-say-die attitude, raw talent and expansive personality turned him into a hero for many. His warrior spirit, however, is what set him apart. For all the wars he has endured have grown his legendary status. From a young man born in the outskirts of Beirut to a man revered around the world. Fakhreddin's life changed once he signed with Brave Combat Federation. In turn, Fakhreddin has delivered iconic performances, high-level fights, incredible rivalries, and a never-say-die attitude that has reverberated throughout the Arab world. Under the Brave CF banner, Mohammed Fakhreddin became a legend, a man revered by his people a champion of the world, but he wants more. On Saturday, August 1st, he plans to double his tag as world champion. As Mohammed Fakhreddin goes hunting for a second belt at Brave CF, the current middleweight champion of the world is one step away from the light heavyweight title and immortality. In front of him stands his biggest rival, a 205 pounds monster named Mohammed Saeed Malam. In Milan, Italy, Fakhreddin will have the opportunity to make history, to permanently set his legacy, and to make sure he reaches a summit never gone before. A pioneer, a myth, a legend, the legend of Fakhreddin.